Hey, we had a good question come in. Oh. Good. Good question. It's a great name for... Hey, it's a good question. Good, good, uh, good here's question, a good, guys. So they don't know this. I'm about to just toss it out. Here's a question. So how should we, and I'm paraphrasing, how should we understand spiritual warfare, and how can we engage in spiritual warfare for ourselves and on the behalf and benefit of others? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So just kind of just a basic general discussion. This should only take 45 to 50 minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But just kind of a basic understanding of like, is it a real thing? Like, is this just a thing that, that certain yes. people like to hop up? Or it what? is a real thing. Yeah. Very real thing. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I don't want to be quiet about Good that. Good question. Did the question was, is it, and then it was, how do we engage it? Well, right how there? should we understand spiritual warfare? It's on the back, it's yeah, on the back wall for you. How should we understand spiritual okay, warfare, cool. and how can we engage in it for ourselves and on the behalf of others? Uh, I'm going to go first. I think, you know, when, 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 uh, when Paul challenged us to pray um, for the things that are unseen in terms of, of, of what we see in this world, so he gives us the the, the armor, the armor of God, and he talks a lot about salvation and, and the, breast of, the, 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 the breastplate of righteousness and the truth of God's Word being this offensive uh, weapon. And so, he gives a great kind of picture of that spiritual warfare. Um, and he talks, and, and, and again, he, he's helping you understand the warfare happens because there is an enemy, right? Um, shoot, I think of that one is the picture of the flaming arrows being shot at you. And so there's an enemy who wants to kill, uh, kill, steal, and destroy according to what Jesus said. And so when Paul says and talks about this, he talks about these invisible uh, principalities and powers. Um, and that is his way of helping people understand the spiritual warfare that is happening. Now, with all of that being said, there is a great deal of um, Hollywood imagination going on in most of our heads. Okay, of what that looks like, okay? And I would say, I would be mo much more careful when you start talking about spiritual warfare, I would be extraordinarily careful about letting your imagination fill in gaps versus actually going to Scripture to fill in gaps, okay? Because for us, we are trust. we all live with a, we may not think about it every day, but we live within the context that there is now a supernatural Holy Spirit that indwells us, which is the Holy Spirit of God. Like, spend a little bit of time thinking about that, and you will, you will short-circuit your brain, okay? Um, but that's the point. The point is, is that there's a lot of trust and faith that we're putting in, into something that we don't fully understand, and yet we are to engage that when it comes to uh, spiritual warfare. And so I would, I would definitely read um, uh, Galatians. Is it Galatians or Ephesians? The, Ephesians, there you go. Ephesians 6. My wife is on the front row for a reason. Uh, Ephesians 6, uh, that's your, that's, I mean, I'm just, if you have not read it and you don't spend time there, uh, you need to understand that. And so it's true. Now, how you engage it maybe for others, I'll let Donnie. Yeah, Donnie, I would love to hear some, like, some practical thing. things. Yeah. Not, not yeah. specific step by step, but like, yeah. how can we engage personally and yeah. then on the behalf of others and, and that piece? Yeah, absolutely. So understand also, as we continue to meld our worlds together, coming from an Eastern and Western world, mm -hmm. our, our cultures are melding at a rate that they've never been melded before. And only in a Western pragmatic culture have we tried to rid ourselves of this idea of spiritual warfare. And so there is a lot that we don't understand from a contextual standpoint as far as experiential, but it's a very real world. And the thing that we have to remember is when Christ died on the cross, it says he descended into the depths of hell and he won victory. Mm -hmm. And the imagery there that the early authors were using were something that the early people would have totally understood. He, he gained victory. And so it says that the name of Jesus, uh, Satan has to flee. And here's why. Because Jesus dethroned Satan. Satan is no longer the prince of the power of the air. And for many years, Christians have taught that he is. And if that's the truth, then what Christ did on the cross is false. Mm -hmm. Christ won the victory. So in this realm of the spiritual world that we have to understand is Christ's blood covers and has won that victory. And the imagery that's there uh, that uh, Paul uses to describe that battle that was fought is Christ, when he paraded yeah. Satan, it's basically the same imagery that was used when a king defeated another king. Yep. They would literally strip them naked, tie a rope around their neck, and either drag them because they cut appendages off or make them try and walk behind the chariot in front of, their, in front of the captives of the people that they caught so that that nation could see that this God reigns victorious over your God mm -hmm. that was supposed to protect your country. 
and then all those subjects that were caught and captive now They're worship freed. the new God, yep. and they because they saw that their their Pharaoh or their king who represented God incarnate was now captured and stripped naked and was powerless. So that's the same imagery that Christ used when he said, I defeated Satan. Satan, all of his power had been removed. And so now all of his subjects, his demonic forces, they've been removed of their power at the name of Jesus. We have in Jude and first and second and third John, when when um, the Michael Archangel Michael, uh, it, everything is, because we're talking war, everything's done in kind of like an order of power and authority. Even Michael would not come against the angels, uh, the angel Satan, all right? And Satan was an angel, highest angel there was, yep. highest created angel, that's why he was kicked out. And then, so he rules over all these other subjects. Even Michael will not fight Satan. Only the name of Jesus defeats Satan. And so when we talk about the spiritual warfare and engaging in spiritual warfare, we have to understand it is not by us or our power yep. that we are able to do anything. We're only able to defeat the enemy because of the power of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen on that. Come on. Now. Yep. That's, where, that's now, where we're able. So in our limited understanding, what you have to know is that when you are a follower of Christ in the supernatural world, especially as you come into contact and you might meet people from Eastern worlds, um, your God is more powerful than any demonic force. If you go into any mission country, uh, and you're, you're going to understand, they're well aware of the demonic forces that exist in this world. Our God is more powerful than all of them. <coughs> in the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. Yep. We have no fear because Jesus covers us. Yeah. That's why it's so important for us to submit and surrender to Jesus because we live in his kingdom and his kingdom protects us. Um, and that's where we have to, that would be the practical piece where we, we give our life to Christ and understand we are protected from any of the demonic forces yep. that exist in this world. Um, now to transition, give, yeah. can you guys give me like one or two, if, if people want to learn more about this, what are some good resources for them, for them to go check out, oh, either gosh. a book or a, just, just one or two things that you would oh. say, that's a good idea to, to look at, or if you have one off the top of your head. We can also put it online I'd say later. be careful because there's so many different ideas. Yeah. How about, let's do this, let's yeah. do this. Read we'll, the Bible. We'll, we'll put something on Facebook this week. <laughs> let's do that. We'll put some things yeah. on, we'll put Facebook on Facebook this week, week. that yeah, we, can, good one. Good. we can kind of vet for you. I would only say this as well, understand the power of... Um, and I don't, use, I don't want to use power the wrong way because I'm 100% agreeing with Don in terms of the power of Jesus Christ has defeated our enemy. Um, but the danger and the influence that post-Christian culture is bringing to our culture, because pre-Christian culture, okay, before we're talking about in, in Jesus' time and, and, uh, and the church, rise of the church, pre-Christian culture in terms of Eastern religions and even pagan religions, all of them understood spiritual warfare. All of them believed there were spiritual forces. So to come to Christ and to have all this language about spiritual warfare, they just got it. Right. They, pagans understood it and, and were able to accept it easily. The problem with the post-Christian culture is from the Western influence of removing, you know, the pragmatic, uh, uh, the pragmatic ideology removes all spiritual and, and mystical influences. And the problem with that is that that is an effort. Let's understand this. That is an effort from the enemy to remove the power of Christian faith from our culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if we can remove, you know, you know, you know the, the the mystical, the the things we don't understand and yet under undeniable, but we can't really explain them, and to remove the spiritual power and influence that we claim as followers of Christ is that undertow of post -Christ, uh, post Christian thinking that wants to remove all that so that they can remove the power from our faith, yep. and that's the danger, and that's the influence that I'm. I think for right now, for me, that's the part in conversation with even my kids that I'm trying to weave into conversation because I don't want them, because they have nothing but this, this current culture to have a reference to, which is, which is pragmatic and ide individualistic and does not, does not favor or lean towards anything spiritual in nature. Yeah. And so just the teaching, just bringing them to church, just having them under good biblical teaching already puts them at the advantage of understanding the Holy Spirit, of understanding Jesus, and understanding the power that is within them because of the power of Christ. And so I would just say that as a, as a practical way of knowing what you're engaging in, you're engaging in something that everyone around you doesn't even want to believe is real. We're talking straight matrix kind of you know, thinking, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That's an, I'm, I'm, yeah. I just, I just 
I told you how old I was. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. It's a good movie. Um, and I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think we can put up some practical resources for yeah. people. Yeah.